Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of the Goldar figure from the Power Rangers movie. This is not the uh, 5 inch small version that came with the Target set, obviously. This is the large scale version, which is in scale with the interactive Megazord, not the full on combiner Megazord. Although, like, if you did want to pose it fighting uh, the individual Zords, um, it's actually pretty decent scale for that. Not perfect, but pretty decent. But in terms of standing side by side, it is perfect with the interactive Megazord. The, uh, you know, large combined of the individual ones, like I said, will tower over it. Um, so, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, before I forget it, just like the interactive Megazord did, and just like the five individual Zords did, this comes with a minifigure, except its minifigure is Rita which is actually pretty decently painted, but its head sculpt is really weird. It looks like Gotenks, um, but the details on it are at least kind of decent. Um, it can move its legs, it can move its arms, and, and all that stuff. It's kind of like a little mini Ranger Key figure. So, even if it does look like Gotenks, it's kind of neat. Okay, so here is Goldar itself, which is a design that has caused quite a bit of controversy. Probably one of the more controversial ones. Personally, I don't mind it all that much. And actually having it in person, getting to see a little bit more of the details up close, I actually kind of dig the design. But that being said, the toy is kind of overall pretty average to below average. I think there was actually some potential here. Um, I think inherently, I, I've mentioned this in numerous other videos and reviews, or whatever that inherently this figure is going to be uh, or this design rather excuse me is going to be hard to translate into figure form to where it's gonna look like it does in the movie because we, we, now we've actually seen movie footage it's all like shiny pretty CGI gold where you know it looks like that but this is just plastic I think that the plastic actually ended up turning out a bit nicer looking than I thought not to say that it looks amazing but I actually thought it was gonna be a bit paler and I'm actually a little bit surprised like pleasantly I guess that it actually does come off as gold because um, you know there's a lot of times especially recently when something's supposed to come off as gold or silver and it ends up coming off as like dull or bronze it's still not the best, but not as bad as I thought. And th like I said, this melty look is pretty controversial. You either you like it, you hate it, or you're kind of indifferent. Like I said, personally, I'm fine with it, but the toy, it's kind of like, unless you got something really expensive, it's really hard to come up with something that can convey a melty thing in a non-cheap looking way. Um, but it's got some decent little design parts, just to look up here at the helmet. I actually really kind of dug the melty face look, I've kind of the alternate look of the Megazord, uh, like an anti-version, like an evil version. So, yeah, it's not as bad as you think, but you, I can see why people wouldn't be a fan, especially of the toy. Um, like the others, you can put um, the little figures in there, so you just flip up these two plates here and you can put Rita in there. So, you know, she'll probably do something like that in the movie, I'm assuming. Maybe. You never know. Uh, I don't remember if that was actually confirmed in any news anywhere or anything, but um, you can do that so she can sort of ride in there just like the other ones. You can obviously see through it more than the others. Um, but as you could probably see when I was, you know, uh, getting a look at him, his main gimmick actually comes from those two little levers on the back which control his weapons. He's got um, a sword here which is really soft material, even more soft than usual, like it's bent from being outside the plastic. This kind of makes sense that it's soft because it's kind of supposed to be like that for the weapon style. Um, but yeah, so its main gimmick is these two levers and you can use it to uh, attack. This will kind of flail around, so whoops, kabeef, and I don't know. And then this can do that. So that's kind of a thing you can do both at once, which that's not really a terrible gimmick. It can kind of make for fun for kids and stuff for battling the Megazords. I do kind of wish there was a way to get the hands to stand up, though. Like, you can bend the wrists here, but they fall down very easy, and like, you can't really get the hands to stay up. Like, I'd like to be able to pose him with just his arm up, which would be nice. Because I know that there's some gimmicks like this where you can actually just click it into place and then unclick it. So that's kind of unfortunate that you can basically only have him at this stance unless you, like, have him propping up his sword against, like, fighting the Megazord or something. Uh, and you can move his wings around so you can sort of fold them up and down uh, to your desired sort of, I don't know, wingspan, I guess. Um, and then just to sort of end off here, I'll get my gaja voice out, but just to show... Um, it next to, oh, oh, it's happening, the interactive Megazord, and there it is, so pretty perfect in scale there, so I kind of like that ability to have these two together, like if you want to do a display of them fighting each other or something, or like I said, for kids, it's kind of neat, um, but yeah, overall, it's just kind of okay, I know a lot of people hate it, it's definitely not a must-have, I would say, I think it actually could have been quite a bit cooler if they had made it so that you could pose it, and also, I think it would have been cool 
if they, maybe not on quite the level of the interactive Megazord, but if they did give it some form of sounds or interactivity, because I think that's one of the things that made the interactive Megazord really fun, and it could have really just made the toy aspect of this neat. Um, but yeah, overall, it's just kind of an average toy, I would say. Like I said, not as bad as I thought it would be, and I actually kind of dig having these two together, but it's definitely not um, an absolute must-have uh, for the line. But anyway, that's about it. Until next time, make sure you go to the Crazy Podcast at writersmanagerambles.com, and of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.